everybody. Welcome to Bass Talk with Freak Bass. This is Freak Bass, and I'm here every live, every Wednesday night, 9 p.m. Eastern Time, right here at the Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash freakbass, and over at YouTube, youtube.com, the Freak Bass channel. Hope everybody's doing good over in the YouTube world. And of course, now we are also at the mighty and ever-changing Twitter. That's twitter.com slash freakbass. So if you're watching that Twitter, and you can hit your retweet button. That would be awesome. Gets the show out to a lot more people. Um, of course, Facebook, hit your mighty share button. And over at the YouTube, you know the routine. Please subscribe. And a mighty thumbs up would be very awesome. Uh, tonight, <clears throat> I've been getting a, a, a lot of emails and a lot of inquiries lately about um, uh, people asking me about double thumb stuff. Now, I've done some videos on that in the past. Um, but I wanted to go do a little bit more of a deep dive on that, uh, that technique. Uh, there's so many ways to approach it. Um, and, um, I'm going to show you the way that I use it and use it in multiple ways. It's not just, I mean, a lot of stuff I do is real groove oriented, you know, funk and, and hip hop and, 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 you know, dance oriented music. Um, but the, um, but, you know, the way I actually came up with it was actually I was kind of I was playing kind of more of like an, uh, it was still kind of funky, but it was more of like a heavier rock band type situation. And the song really wanted to need that drive that you almost get when you play with a pick, you know, real heavy like that. And I didn't like having to I mean, I mean, I'm a space cadet. I can't keep track of, you know, the next day, let alone where my pick's going to be. So I was like a combination of that combination i didn't want to have to hold a pick in my hand for everything and that now i felt that might limit me in terms of switching between other techniques like playing with my fingers and and, and thumping and plucking and stuff like that so i was like well i'll just try to you know for now try to use my thumb a, as that as, as like a pick and that's kind of the approach i took with it is so um anything i did with a pick i would try to do that with my thumb and that's the way I would start if it's if it's your first time jumping into it or if maybe you've tried this technique before kind of think of it with that those kind of parameters um, you know for, for starters you know you make a thumbs up just like you're doing when you're thumping and you're plucking but you're never moving your thumb around at all it's almost kind of like the like your thumb is like a drumstick or if it's like it's like a pick you know it's like stuck on there and it's not physically moving at all it's all your wrist action that's where you're getting it from so you can see down here when i'm playing like just steady eighth notes i'm on an a string on my third fret right now I'm not physically going like that with my thumb. I'm literally, it's all coming from my wrist. And that's the way, if you're just a beginner, that's the way, and you want to get into doing some double thumb technique stuff, or you've been playing for a while, and, you, and you're trying to like try some different techniques in your bass playing, that's the way I would start. Just start on one note. You know, I'm using C. And just really concentrate on doing nice, even movements up and down. One and two and three and four and. So the ands are like with your up, the downs or the downbeat is with your coming down on the string. And I'm physically, you can kind of see there, I'm going all the way through the string and coming all the way up to the string. I'm hitting the string, just to let you know, with about the middle of my thumb, like right in my middle of my thumb when I'm doing the ups, you know. And when I'm coming down, I'm coming down with the middle of my thumb this way. So it's I'm getting a lot of the meat of the thumb on that string, and that's how we're getting that real nice tone. And that's where you want to start. And then maybe I would say for step two, what you would want to do is just try doing something simple like octaves. You know, stay on the C. Just back and forth, you know, third fret on your A string, two, three, four, and then go to your fifth fret on your G string. Both C's, one, two, three, four, and making them nice and even. Another thing, nice thing to do is to do scales. Just run a scale that you might normally think to. 
like a major C major scale. Or you could do a four, you know, like sixteenth notes. One and two and uh, one E and. and. And that's a real good way to get into it. And, and if you're a little more advanced, one thing I would maybe try to do is do, uh, if you're doing like 16th notes, is to do two notes on, two notes off in terms of like pressing down on your fingerboard. So you're always moving this the whole time and going through the string at the same amount of weight, but two of the notes you're pushing down on the fretboard, two of the notes you're leaving off. Uh, so you've got two notes and two ghost notes. And then the more and more you just, you're going to get more and more comfortable the more and more you do it. And that's why I think you should practice stuff that you wouldn't normally think of like as a groove or funk thing. Just more just of just like, you know, playing a melodic line or scales are great ones. So, and then once you feel with that, let me, uh, you know, you heard me playing it at the beginning. Um, I wrote this little kind of line to kind of, and I'm going to break it down and show you. And this might be something you might want to try to play along with too. So check it out. Up the octave. Quickly, you know, whenever I watch myself on video, it's always weird to see yourself playing sometimes. But, um, you know, and I've had people ask me about this. You know, I have my thumb kind of laying over the neck, which, you know, typically you don't think is good technique, which if you do it all the time, it probably isn't. But when I'm doing a lot of this stuff, I'm playing so heavy, I'm actually using my thumb to mute my E string. So the less... Um, Muting notes, especially when you start recording a lot, if, you have a, if you're if you somebody who hasn't gotten in the studio much, if you're a studio person, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You want you want no ring from your other string. You just want that one note from that one string. So I use this as almost kind of like a mute. Um, so when you see my thumb over there, it's not like I'm getting lazy with technique. You know, I'll bring it back, but it's just when I'm doing this. So let me show you this really, um, this bass line without uh, the groove at all. So it's the in a lower register. register. So 
So what I'm doing here, exactly, we're in the key of C minor. I'm starting on the minor seventh each time, which on the B flat. So I'm on the lower position, I'm on the first fret of the A string, and I'm just... So it's what I was talking about with the scales. I'm doing down up on the note, and then two without pushing down on the string. So you're always having that. It's two in, two out. Then I'm hammering up one to three. And then I'm hammering one to three on the E. One to three on the A, thump, thump. Then we've got. So, three to five, F to G. At, uh, e flat to F, one to three. And you see, when I'm coming back on that E flat, you could just do it straight thumping, but when you do that up, uh, you know, the double thumb thing on the up, it has more of a, kind of grabs you. And even when I go back to that B flat before I start the thing again, I do a ghost note down without pushing and then come up. The same thing on the upper register. I'm just starting on the uh, eighth to the tenth fret, B flat to C on the uh, on the D string. So I'm going F G hammer uh, eight to ten on the A, eight ten on the D. Again, I'm coming, when I come up on that note on the F, hammering up the G, and I'm doing a down ghost note, coming up on the note on the F. Same thing on the E flat. It gets a little trickier sometimes on the G string because, you know, you don't have another string there to kind of stop your thumb from going down, so you just be a little more precise. So, you know, earlier I was saying it'd be good to practice doing it on your A string with that. I think also it'd be good to do, pick a random note on your upper register on your G string and try to just work on that, making that very even too. And that's, that's the key, there we go. And that's it. That's a little bit of double thumb. So I've got a lot of videos on the double thumb technique. Wanted to show you a different approach tonight. Let me know any questions. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in each week. Make sure you join me every Thursday night, uh, 9 p.m. Eastern Time, and Saturday night, 10 p.m. Eastern Time, for uh, 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 live grooves with Freak Bass on Twitch. That's twitch.tv slash Freak Bass. We're creating all grooves with all these crazy instruments around me, all live improvisation and all live music production. It's a really cool time. And then Saturday night, Saturday night chit chat at 9 p.m. Eastern time. This week I have a um, uh, great guest on this week. So uh, make sure that uh, you tune in. We always have great guests. So we'll see you next time. All right. Thanks for coming out.